no, somehow I ran it over. Wow. Well. Did you save it? No. Oh no, too late? Too late. Turtle crossing. Was it still alive? Yeah. Barely? Yeah. At least it was a red-eared slider and not a red eared a slider. Non-invasive Do we have, species. Because we have lots of those things. Yeah. Invasive toitles. People kind of like don't want their turtles anymore and kind of put them out into the wild. Is that what happened? Yeah. And they went crazy? Red -eared, yeah, red-eared sliders are usually pet turtles. The more you know, rainbow. Hey guys, welcome back. Brian here again. We got a busy one for you today. Steph's getting a tattoo. And the dormers are being finished today at the abandoned garage house. So we're gonna go check those out later on. And of course, we'll get to all that, but first, coffee at the lake. That's awesome. Mercy V. First Paul Lily. I'm a whole life. It's a humid one today, again. Heat warning, five consecutive days in a row all across North America. Fishing boat, go get him. Tattoo today. Sunflower? Yeah. Sorry guys, my microphone cut out here, so I'll do my best to try and recreate the conversation as I recall it. Steph, this view's awesome, but not as awesome as me. I know, Brian, because you're so handsome. Means we can put shingles on. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Black shingles. Make the castle look even taller. Looks like a rook. Another castle. Garage house castle. Like from the fish fly carcasses. That was gross yesterday. It was just five feet out. Massive surface area of them. Gross. I'm talking this way at you when I should be talking this way. All the fish flies. Gross. Well, guys, the microphone doesn't want to cooperate this morning, so we're going old school. We're going to go get a tattoo, new tattoo ink. We'll head over. We'll do a dormer tour later on this afternoon. So in this video, tattoos and dormers, dormer days. Let's go. Well, they're off and running, so I'm out of there and uh, let's go check on the job site. Can I have a large ice cap, please? Large ice cap? Yes. Anything else? No, thank you. Oh. Amazing. Whoa, how are you Good, how are you? Fantastic. Great, thank you. Nice Except for this heat, that's why I'm getting the iced one. Oh, it's not even July. No. Thank you. We're in for a while. We are. Have a great day. <laughs> oh, that's good.
40 plus degrees all week. So big shout out to this amazing crew that's been working through this nasty weather we've been having here. Well, they're up, you know, in the air, exposed to the sun. Thank you. Gorgeous. All right, let's go take a look. You see that little dormer piece? Yes, you do. Well, guys, welcome to the jungle. I think we always have fun and games, always. Whew. Well, if you're just joining us, we've been converting this old abandoned off-grid garage into a garage house. We had to pour a four foot foundation underneath the existing slab structure in order to build this loft upstairs. The building is still currently technically off-grid, although we do have hydro, there's one plug. No water, no toilets, no showers, nothing. In fact, this is where we're going to be running the services in from the street. So if that's the kind of content you're into, why don't you go ahead and hit that like button down below. Isn't it awesome? Look at how tall this is. Well, last week we cut off the original roof, trashed it, and had this loft system built over here on the ground. Then we lifted it with a crane and slowly put it back on top of this original downstairs. Well, this wall's new. That wall's original. That wall's original. Bumped it out another four feet so we can build stairs here up to the sky loft. And now you're cut up and irregular, just like the rest of us. All right, let's go look at these dormers. Look at that. It's a castle. Looks like a, a rook from the street to me, the chess piece. Right? Right? Hot. Oh, what do you think? Window. Window. These will be replaced. So there's gonna be a bathroom downstairs, bathtub and toilet, bathroom upstairs, shower and toilet. This is where the new foundation was poured at the back for the addition. Well, that's new and that's the original. So we came out in order to support the load up top. There's no one around. So let's go climb the scaffolding and go take a peek up there. So, full eight foot ceiling. Uh, I'm standing in it, look at that. So it's full eight foot ceiling in the middle and in the dormers. Full eight foot ceiling. And then here it comes down to the knee wall, which supports most of the load here. That's why there's no beam downstairs. Again, window here. Can't see much of the lake this time of year because the trees and whatnot. You'll see the water in the winter, that's for sure. The lake is on the other side of that tree. <laughs> so this will be the primary bedroom. 23 feet this way, 12 feet here in the middle, plus the dormer on either side. There's actually going to be a bathroom right here. Toilet, shower, sink. It's going to come out four feet right to this line here but that's okay because this side bumps out too so it's the same floor surface area just move down that way we could cram a shower a toilet and pedestal sink as an ensuite in the loft space again there's gonna be a window at the back pretty customary of course yeah. it's awesome it's absolutely huge so because of the load, the weight on either end, on the sides, that's why we had to pour the foundation underground. The original roof of this abandoned garage cabin had the loft pull downstairs, you know, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. 
the stairs you would pull down from an attic. It was an attic space up here. You couldn't stand. You had to pull down the unfoldable stairs. It was not livable space by any means. Although somebody was living up here, there was a mattress and a, an off-grid camping bucket, if you know what I'm saying. And, uh, and then it just sat empty until it went for sale and we scooped it and now you're caught up. But what's really exciting is the vacant land next door belongs to this property. So out here off the, off the bathroom to the portage on to the tree line belongs to this property. So much potential. The yard is actually a hundred feet wide. So the garage that I'm staying on, we could sever. This could be its own 50 foot yard and we could repeat the process next door. You'll have to subscribe and stick around to see as I eat my hair. <laughs> If that's what we do, sky's the limit. Okay, it's 175 degrees. Let's go see how Steph's making out in town with the new ink, and we'll head back to the lake. If anybody asks, we didn't go up there. Oh, we're gonna do, I think we're gonna do vertical siding. Make the tall castle look even taller. Standard black shingle, trying to keep it as neutral as possible. Timeless as possible. Bye, see you tomorrow. So the original footprint of that building is 21 and change by 21 and change, just, just over 400 square feet. We bumped it out another 100 square feet at the back, four feet uh, out from the building, 25 feet long. And then we added another 12 by 20, you know, 250 square feet of living space upstairs too, bringing it as close to 750, 800 square feet as possible. I learned a long time ago when I was trying to buy a really tiny house that actually sat on the land, the bank was still apprehensive to loan money because the house was only 600 square feet. So if you're looking to do these kinds of things and you need to borrow money, check with your lender. There's a few sticking points. Like you can't traditionally borrow money from a traditional lender to buy vacant land. So if we bring this close to 800 square feet, we will have no problem borrowing against it for the next project down the road. For those of you that are looking into HELOCs, uh, where I live, anyway, typically you can borrow 80% in a home equity line of credit against your primary residence. But typically you can only borrow 60% against a rental property. So there's some things for us to consider, right? We've got the garage at home that we live in and we've got the garage here that we're building. And we want to build the third one. The question becomes, which pocket do we pull from? A better question is, do you want a mortgage on your primary residence or do you just want to shove it off to the rental property? So if you ever sell it and have to break the mortgage and pay the fees of breaking the mortgage, which I just call the cost of doing business, then you know it's separate from your primary residence asset. Let's cut it on the financial literacy today, Aspinall. And in full disclosure, started my adult life in debt, not student loan debt. I then accrued student loan debt debt. So please, if you take away anything from this channel, it's if we can do it, you can do it. I will also say this is not a how-to channel. This is just how we do it. I forgot to take a thumbnail, so I'm going back to do that. Then I'm going to hit the road back into the town and see Steph. So I'll see you back in the town with the Steph. Well, I stopped and they were still working on outlining, so she still has a couple of hours to go. It's just after 12.30 p.m. on a Thursday, so the grocery store is pretty empty. 
way too hot for Komodo gel. There will not be a Komodo gel cook-off tonight. No way. Cue up amazing grocery store montage and insert it right here. Guys, first day of summer isn't even until tomorrow. Tomorrow is summer solstice. So if that's in the indicator of what this season's going to be like. Then I am incredibly excited because I love the heat. Yes, it's the last day of spring here on Canada's most southern mainland shoreline. And it's already 40 plus degrees Celsius. Has been all week. Afternoon, green skies, thunderstorms, no hail yet, touch wood. Woo! This truck might be a 2008, but the AC works. For my geography friends, we're located at latitude 42 in Canada, which is further south than about a third of the United States. Just trying to spread information about the, the stereotype of Canadians. It's not all cold across our beautiful country. In fact, it's a massive country in terms of land mass. There's parts of this country where you can go skiing and surfing in the same day, predominantly on the West Coast, Vancouver area. But here where we are, we're as far south as Northern California. In fact, Detroit, Michigan is about 45 minutes north of where we live currently. And it's literally Literally 100 degrees today. Literally. I don't know if I've ever seen a motorcycle sidecar in real life. I don't know if I have. It says two wheel drive. All right, friends, back to the tattoo studio. Is it burning now? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little hot under the <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's a little greenhouse now. Yeah. On the 40 degree day. I love that it fills in that spot, that empty space. Between the older one and then. Yeah, like this part was bugging me. Cool. Good morning. The sun has risen, the lake is flat. Feels like the humidity finally broke a little bit. Oh, happy summer. I think it's officially summer. Like the season officially. I know it's been 182 degrees all week. Hello, gorgeous. Look at that today. I don't often share when I when I flip these CDs and then put them down. It's all rocks under my feet here until that line, which does come in a little ways here. And this is a result of this jut out right here. It's holding everything in this corner. I mean, it's only shin deep, ankle deep right there. <laughs> so float the boat, float the sea dew right there. And then I get on the back. Look at that. That's all seaweed and, and algae. First humid week. So that's all sand. And that's all rock. Right, the waves pull it out of these break walls here. Every couple of years, you know, you hire your friends and neighbors, kids and nieces and nephews to come and Pull the rocks out and throw them back in the break wall. Well guys, time for a coffee run. So we're gonna end this video here. Big day, more sheeting and roofing and plywooding and dormering and trussing and all kinds of other things. 
you're just gonna have to stick around hit the subscribe button so you don't mix mix so you don't mix go ahead and remix the videos hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our next video peace and love from canada's most southern mainland Charlie gets really close to you. <gasps> tell me matter don't forget you matter if you'd enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave us a comment down below. If you want to support our work, feel free to buy us a coffee. Link is in the description below. Give somebody close to you a hug. Tell them they matter. Don't forget, you matter. See you tomorrow or the day after. Catch you on the next one.